Hello dear student, uh, welcome on this lecture. Till now we have covered uh, magnetic field calculation because of bios law and Ampere's law. And once we have done with the magnetic field, now we are going to understand or discuss about those concepts uh, which are influenced because of the presence of magnetic field. So in that uh, sequence, this is the one which says magnetic force on a moving charge. So if there is a moving charge and that is in presence of a magnetic field, then you'll find that moving charge is going to experience a magnetic force. So let's say we have a charge this is charge q it can be positive as well as negative so key can uh, this q can have a positive as well as negative value and let's say it's moving so it's moving in some direction so i am drawing that direction in this way it could be any direction for that matter so that's the velocity is v and this is moving with v velocity and in presence of some external magnetic field b so B is the external magnetic field that is existing. In that magnetic field, this charged particle is moving with velocity V. Right? And how this magnetic field is coming, there can be N ways of uh, 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 creating external magnetic field that we have learned in the previous lectures. Because of uh, current carrying uh, arrangements, magnetic fields come in. So whenever this kind of situation is that a charged particle moving with velocity, and there's a magnetic field present then you'll find this charged particle is going to experience a force so whatever the force is experienced by this charged particle in presence of magnetic field while it was moving that force is known as magnetic force on a moving charge and this force is given by this expression so force on a moving charge is given by f vector that means it will be giving us magnitude as well as direction both and this is, is equal to Q the charge into in a bracket V the velocity cross B the magnetic field. Since velocity and magnetic field both are vector quantities so their vector product that is called cross product is going to be applied in order to find what the force it is going to experience. So force experienced by a moving charge is given by this expression it is q v cross b understood now this q can be positive or q can be negative the sign of q is going to influence the direction of f because we know the direction of vector is decided by the uh, sign that gets multiplied with this v cross b and v is given to us b is given to us so we can go for the cross product and we can find the magnitude as well as direction out of it so let's talk about what the magnitude can be and what the direction will be. So if we talk about the magnitude of force, magnitude of force, so that force magnitude is going to be F is equal to, we will be writing the mod value of Q. So Q, mod of Q rather you can write, V, B, sin theta, where, where theta is going to be angle between uh, v vector and b vector so theta is angle between velocity vector and magnetic field vector so here these are vectors so their directions are going to play a role so q v b sin theta in short we can write if we take this positive so q v b sin theta is the force magnitude how to find the direction of this force so direction of force will be decided by v cross b and the sine of q so we can say if q is positive then the direction of force will be given by direction of v cross b so v cross b is going to give us the direction for force if oh, okay let me it is this symbol equality symbol or we can say this force direction will be decided by this cross product v cross b and how to get this cross product we know the rules cross product uh, uh, using the right hand rule and it's going to be perpendicular to this and perpendicular to that and another condition will be if you will find 
q is negative then direction of force will be opposite to this opposite to we are going to write it as opposite to v cross b direction so whatever the v cross b direction is opposite will become the direction of f if q is coming out to negative moreover some important point can be extracted in this direction aspect that this force is force is perpendicular to perpendicular to velocity that's an important point and it will have its own uh, consequences so this is perpendicular to velocity because we know in a cross product the resultant vector is perpendicular to both the vectors so it's a perpendicular to v and this force is also perpendicular to the magnetic field so if we know the direction of magnetic field and direction of velocity then the cross product is going to be perpendicular to the velocity as well as perpendicular to the uh, magnetic field now if we interpret this then we'll find some important aspect this is a force which is perpendicular to velocity whenever the force acts perpendicular to the velocity then it cannot change the magnitude it will be changing only the direction right so we can say magnetic force that acts on a moving charge cannot change the speed it can change only velocity so force is always perpendicular to velocity force is perpendicular to velocity so that's that's written over there so let me write the correct point that means the, uh, the force will be changing the, the direction of velocity it means f vector changes only direction of velocity only direction of velocity not at magnitude so velocity is magnitude is changing and we can say hence speed does not change so that will be implying speed does not change and then you can relate so many questions from the kinematics or, or mechanics part speed does not change but some popular questions you can pick like this uh, if the magnetic force is acting so what is the change in kinetic energy so you say speed does not change hence kinetic energy remains constant so we can conclude kinetic energy does not change does not change because kinetic energy does not depend on the velocity rather it depends on the magnitude of velocity or you can say speed instantaneous speed this velocity is instantaneous velocity right so instantaneous velocity and instantaneous speeds are equal and uh, if it says uh, linear momentum so what we can say linear momentum p if it is a linear momentum so linear momentum is m into v now you say it's a vector quantity so it involves the direction hence linear momentum changes so linear momentum changes but kinetic energy does not change because that does not depend on the direction so point is this force magnetic force does not depend on uh, this this magnetic force does not change the magnitude of velocity it changes only the direction only the direction moreover if somebody says what is the work done what is the work done by magnetic force so if we are calculating the work done by this force you'll find this force is going work done by this force is going to be zero because it's not changing the kinetic energy so that that means the work done by a magnetic force which is acting on a moving charge is always zero because it does not perform any work because of the reason it cannot change the speed moreover we can also connect another important point that's power produced so how much the power it's, this force is going to produce if we write power you remember this power is force dot velocity and we have talked about over here the velocity is perpendicular to the force hence power deliver is going to be zero so these all are interpretations of this force based on our mechanics concepts so once we have understood that the force is perpendicular to this velocity then you'll find th there will be only change in the uh, direction of velocity no change in the speed no change in the kinetic energy momentum linear momentum changes work done by the force is zero power delivered by this force is zero so all the points are important. 
Similarly, uh, this force is also perpendicular to the magnetic field. That means this force will be acting uh, perpendicular to the magnetic field. And uh, based on that, it will be taking the particle in, in, in a variable direction because it keeps on acting perpendicular to the direction of velocity. So that's an important point and important force. And whenever uh, this magnetic field is present and if the charge is moving, then we will be finding this force is going to be behaving just like any other force that we have talked about. And this is going to be the magnitude QVB sin theta and the direction we have discussed in detail. Moreover, this force acts only if there is a velocity. That means if the particle is at rest, then the force acting because of magnetic field is going to be zero. So force because of magnetic field will be acting only if the charge is moving. Making sense? So that means if the particle is at rest and you apply the magnetic field, it will not apply any force on that uh, particular charged particle. However, if you apply electric field, it will apply a force on the charged particle, right? So there is a difference between electric field and magnetic field. Magnetic field force comes only when there is a velocity and when there is a charged particle and when there is a field existing and the force is given by the magnitude and direction that we have just discussed. Let's take an example and try to use this force. So here is the example and uh, you can read this example and pause the video, solve it and let me know what the answer is. Uh, or you can check the, your answer when I'm going to explain this uh, over here. So you can pause and solve it. Anyway, it says a charged particle has acceleration this. So that's, that's moving because it's got acceleration. And it is in the field, uh, magnetic field, which is given by this. And in this acceleration, this x is unknown. We need to find this x value, right? So we can say, well, okay, whenever the charged particle moves in a magnetic field, so force comes out to be Q V cross P. V cross B. So from here, one thing is clear that this force is perpendicular to force is perpendicular to velocity as well as magnetic field. So we are talking about the magnetic field because magnetic field is given to us. Moreover, we know whatever this net force is, if it is acting on a particle, so that must be equal to mass into acceleration as per the Newton's law. So since force is directly proportional to acceleration, so we can say force is always parallel to acceleration or in fact they are in the same direction. So if we combine these two together, then we can think of, or we can conclude at least this, that means acceleration is going to be perpendicular to magnetic field. So if in a magnetic field, uh, this magnetic field is the only force acting, then you'll find the acceleration is going to be perpendicular to the magnetic field. And whenever the uh, two vectors are perpendicular, then we know what we can do. So can we say from here, since these two vectors are perpendicular, then dot product of these two vectors must be zero. So we can claim a dot b must be zero. Then it's done. Now a vector is given to us, b vector is given to us. We can go for the dot product of these two and we can claim it to be zero. As soon as you do so, you will get your answer. Now I'm doing this directly. I coefficient and I coefficient, they get multiplied together. So it's going to be two and minus three, that is minus six. And j and j will be multiplying together. So it's going to be two x, which is x is unknown. And k coefficient is going to be zero because of a reason 4 into 0. So that has to be 0. So this will let us know twice x is equal to 6. So what the x is going to be equal to? x is equal to 3. Now, so from here, the point that we have used, uh, or important point or new point that we have used, that force is QV cross B. That means force is perpendicular to B. Hence, acceleration is also going to be perpendicular to B. Then we have used the rule of Victor dot product and we have uh, cal calculated the answer that was needed. Making sense? So th that's our answer. Now, after understanding that there is a force on a moving charged particle in a magnetic field, we will be considering this particular case in detail, that is motion of a charged particle in a uniform magnetic field. So magnetic field is uniform, and we are trying to find what the motion of the charged particle is going to be. So there can be n cases because we know there's a force, force acting is equal to QV cross B, V cross B, 
and uh, it will also depend on the charge and it will depend what the angle between V and B is. So let's consider for the time being this Q is a positive. So until and unless is specified, we will consider this Q to be positive. And theta is the angle between them. So this F will become by a magnitude as Q V B sin theta. Now, well, this theta will be uh, de deciding what type of uh, motion the charged particle is going to undergo if if this uh, charged particle having a velocity enters in a magnetic field which is uniform in nature. So we can think of cases. Let's say we are considering the case one. Case one, and that case one is basically for theta. Let's say theta is zero or for that sec theta is 180 degree that means magnetic field and velocity they are parallel so basically we are trying to say the velocity and this magnetic field is parallel that means if the particle is released in the direction of magnetic field or opposite to it what happens then then you'll find if this is the case then you'll find uh, this will conclude what it is going to conclude this is going to conclude the force is going to be zero since force is zero, so what type of path it is going to follow? Then you will say, if this was uh, the direction of magnetic field, which was existing, and if somebody releases a particle in this way, with this velocity v, and that is a particle of charge q mass m, then you will find there will be no force acting on this particle. And since no force is acting, then you will find it is going to follow the same path. So this particle will keep on moving in the same straight path so motion will be a straight line and uh, the particle will keep on moving with a uniform velocity and on a straight line path so we can conclude that in this particular case then motion of the particle will be uniform motion will be uniform uniform one dimensional so particle will keep on moving on a straight line and it will be uniformly moving that means acceleration is zero so acceleration is zero velocity is a constant one dimensional motion it is it's a one dimensional motion and it's a uniform motion and all that those points you can associate with it so that's the simplest point or case but it is important case now case number two which is uh, most important out of all cases or, or most common you can say and this is if theta is 90 degree so we consider theta as a 90 degree that means basically we are considering v perpendicular to b so if velocity and uh, ma this magnetic field they are perpendicular then one thing we can decide that the force is going to be q v b q v and b because sin theta becomes sin 90 and sin 90 becomes zero so what type of this path is going to be we can think of now you see this f q is a constant v is a constant b is a constant so this is a constant force but it is going to be direction perpendicular to the velocity so direction will be changing but magnitude will remain constant then you'll find conclusion will be this then motion will be motion of the particle will be motion will be uniform circular motion uniform circular motion so particle will be undergoing uniform circular motion in case the velocity and magnetic field are at 90 degree let me illustrate a bit uh, let's say the magnetic field is inside in this space so that any direction on this white screen board is going to be perpendicular to the B and if we have entered any particle in this direction let's say this magnetic field exists in the, all this space and we have started a particle in this direction so you'll find the velocity and magnetic field they are perpendicular to each other 
and as uh, if the charge is taken as a positive then the force will be decided by q v cross b hence the direction will be uh, y v cross b in this case if we do the v cross b on this charged particle then the force will come out to as v cross b in this direction so this force will basically tend to change the velocity direction after some time this particle will be moving in this way and then since this is perpendicular to force is perpendicular to the velocity so force will also ch change its direction and will act on the perpendicular direction then you'll find this force is basically keep on changing the direction of velocity and you find this kind of motion the particle is going to perform that means particle is going to perform uniform circular motion why uniform because the speed is not going to change and and it's going to be circular because this force will be acting as a centripetal force okay so let me move ahead and uh, draw that particular uh, circular path in uh, some proper manner so it's going to be look like this let me draw something like this so that's going to be path circular path magnetic field is existing at all the places and particle started moving initially in the direction so it was let's say dropped from here that's a q particle so that was the velocity initial velocity velocity is going to be tangential and that's a q charge hence this uh, after some time you will find velocity will become like this then velocity will become like this and this velocity will keep on changing and since this velocity is changing similarly the force will keep on changing initially force will be acting in this direction vertically up direction then this force direction will be changing like this using the right hand rule of cross product you can verify this force will be this that means force will be acting towards a point and that point is is known as the center of the circle so it's acting toward the center that means this force is centripetal force now since this is centripetal force we can write some important aspect of it what we can write we can say uh, f is acting as a centripetal force so let me write this f which is qvb that provides necessary centripetal force for the motion this provides necessary you know whenever the particle is moving on a circular trajectory there is a requirement of a centripetal force so this provides necessary centripetal force centripetal force for particle or for the particle to move on a circle and once we know what the centripetal force is then we can say this centripetal force must be equal to mv square by r where r is the radius of that circle so from here we can find out what the radius of the circle is going to be and uh, what the frequency and time periods are going to be so let's move ahead so this f force which is equal to qvb this is also has to be equal to mv square by r as per the requirement of uh, circular motion then you'll find uh, one v is getting cancelled out and we can say from here r is going to be equal to mv upon qb so that becomes a very important relation that let us know what the radius of the circle is going to be when this particle is performing circular motion so the radius is mv upon qv where mv is the linear momentum so we can say radius is linear momentum divided by q into b right and uh, sometimes uh, we can write this q by m separately this q by m because once a particle is known to us then its mass and uh, charge is known to us so this is also known as a specific charge a specific charge a specific because of we are dividing by mass and we are dividing this charge by mass so it becomes a specific charge so if a specific charge is given to us so we can use by dividing this mass uh, by this q 
or we can write this mv as a p so whatever we can way we can write we can write it now you you can think from this expression a q is a constant b is a constant because the uniform case we are tackling mass is a constant speed is a constant hence you'll find r is a constant that means particle is moving in a circle and that radius of that circle is r so that's r we are talking about and it's mv upon qb so that radius depends on the velocity that means the speed with which you throw it Moreover, moreover, we can also find what the time period uh, of uh, this uh, uniform circular motion is going to be. So, we can say time period. We know what this time period is. It's, it's a time to take a one complete uh, revolution. So, this time period T can be written as how much the time, uh, how much the time it will take to make a complete round is going to be equal to the distance it covers in one round. That is two pi r. That's a Periphery divided by speed since the speed is a constant, so we can divide by v. Now we can put the value of r over here, or we can say r by v is going to be m upon qb, so it's going to be twice pi m upon qb. So that com comes out to be formula for time period. Time period is 2 pi m, m is the mass, divided by q into b. q is a charge, so mass and charge they are given properties of. Uh, particle b is the field that you are applying now that means if the b is changed then you'll find the time period will be changing right if you have a stronger b then the time period will be smaller if a weaker magnetic field then the time period will be larger moreover the important point is that this time period is independent of speed or velocity that means if you change the velocity if you change the velocity of the particle then it will have the same time to make a complete rotation as it was having earlier that means changing velocity does not change the time period why because if you change the velocity then the radius increases that means if you have a higher velocity it will be moving on a larger circle in such a way that in one complete round it takes the same time right so thus becomes very important aspect and uh, that is uh, favorable for examination point of view so I, am, I can write over here this t that is time period is independent independent of v so that means if you change speed time period does not change even if you change the radius time period does not change it depends only on the magnetic field and then the charged particle that you are using now if it is the time period so we can talk about the frequency because what we know frequency is given as 1 upon time period so it's going to be 1 upon t which you can write in this manner that it's going to be equal to qb divided by twice pi m so that's the frequency formula and if frequency is asked you can find that frequency if time period is asked you can find time period but we can remember both are independent of the speed so that's uh, with respect to the case when theta that means angle between um, magnetic field and the velocity is 90 degree then qvv becomes the centripetal force we equated we found the radius on which it is going to move this radius depends on the velocity or momentum linear momentum directly and the time period is independent of velocity and independent of the radius making sense so that's important part so this is the second case now let's go for the third case what happens when uh, the angle is neither 0 nor 90 so case 3 case 3 says if theta is neither 0 nor 180 so if theta is neither 0 nor 90 or nor 180 as well so that means v and b they are neither perpendicular nor parallel so in that case uh, let, let me draw the picture let's say uh, this b is acting in this direction and this this is horizontal direction let's say that's a direction of magnetic field and a charged particle has been given a velocity and that velocity is making some angle with this magnetic field and that angle is neither 90 nor 180 nor 0 so that's the direction of velocity and this angle is theta and that particle is charged particle that is moving 
So uh, again, we are thinking this Q is a positive and all that, M is the mass. So you'll find this, uh, this is the basically combination of the first two cases that we have already talked about. So what we can do, we can say this velocity can be treated uh, as uh, having two components. One component is in the direction of magnetic field. Another component is going to be in the direction of, uh, in the direction which is perpendicular to this magnetic field. So the component which is going to be parallel to magnetic field, we can call it as a V parallel. And the component which is going to be perpendicular to the magnetic field, we can write V perpendicular. This V parallel is going to be basically V cos theta. And this V perpendicular is going to be equal to V sin theta. Making sense? Now, then we can uh, superpose the case 1 and case 2 together. This V parallel is uh, parallel to the magnetic field and you will find uh, on this component there is going to be no force acting because of the magnetic field. So this velocity component will keep itself maintained. Whereas this perpendicular component of uh, velocity will be experiencing a force such that it will try to move in a circle. So that means here the motion is going to be basically a uh, straight line plus circle. So you can say in this case the force is going to be equal to Q V B sin theta. That's the force that is going to act. And we can conclude then motion of the particle will be motion of the particle will be a straight line a straight line plus circle so if it is a straight line plus circle that's called basically helical motion or helix helical motion so it's like a particle is moving on a circle as well as it's moving in the forward direction. So uh, it's going to be uh, some sort of this, a particle starts with this, goes in a circle, comes back, but not at the same position, a bit ahead, and then bit ahead, then bit ahead, then bit ahead, and it's moving on a circle and moving. So you can see this is particle is moving in this way as well as on the circle. All right, so that, that motion is called helical motion and the path is called helix. So this is path which is called helix path. Make sense? So uh, that's what it is going to be. That means it will be superposition of straight line motion as well as circular motion. So uh, then what can be asked, to, a few, few points can be asked related to this. That is what is um, time period because it's moving on the circle then coming back on that thing. So that is uh, time period to complete one round and it's also moving in the forward direction. So what is the radius is going to be? So you can say radius will be coming because of this perpendicular component. And then you can say uh, this force is, which is the force which is going to be QVB sine theta, QVB sine theta. This is going to be providing the necessary centripetal force, which is MV square by R. Because this another component will apply no force. So centripetal force will be coming because of this. So from here we can say, uh, it's going to be R is equal to uh, okay uh, let me correct this point this force is going to be this but uh, from the force point of view we need to draw the uh, figure properly and then we need to see which component is coming over here but one thing where we can directly say that uh, this circular motion is caused by this so instead of using V we can use V perpendicular so we can say the radius of helix radius radius of helix is going to be equal to using the same formula is going to be m v divided by q b but here we are not going to use the total v we are going to use the v which was perpendicular that was causing this uh, circular motion so we can write it as it's going to be m v sin theta divided by q b so this is going to be the formula for radius of that helical path which is going to be created because of this motion so that's one of the important part related to radius moreover if somebody asks time period so we can say time period is going to be given by the same formula because time period does not depend on the velocity 
so time period of that motion is going to be equal to t is equal to 2 pi m upon qb so it does not require any velocity and uh, this time period is basically because of the circular motion but we know uh, the velocity uh, it is independent from hence it's going to be 2 pi m upon qb making sense and uh, another point that comes in in this helical motion is called pitch so what the pitch is let me explain first and then we can find it easily pitch is basically p pitch we write by p and it means uh, since we have talked about there is a straight line motion is going on and then there is a circular motion is going on so when we uh, when the particle makes one complete round on the circle it moves in the direction of magnetic field as well right so that means it's it's a distance covered by the particle along the magnetic field in one complete revolution so we can say it is the length or you can call distance length along direction of b length along b covered by particle covered by charged particle in one time period in one time period so in one time period how much distance it covers along the length or along the direction of magnetic field that particular length is called pitch so can we say the particle along the magnetic field is moving with a constant speed and uh, or constant velocity you can say so since it's a constant and the time is given to us we can multiply to to get the pitch expression so expression for pitch will become v parallel into t now we can put the value of v parallel as well as uh, this t to find our answer so v parallel is going to be uh, v cos theta t is this so our answer will become twice pi m v cos theta divided by q into b now all the numbers are known to us hence this will give us the value of this pitch that is the distance covered by the particle along the direction of magnetic field in one time period right so these are the important quantities that uh, can be asked related to the third case when the will uh, when the angle between the velocity and magnetic field is neither zero nor 90 that means neither they are parallel nor perpendicular so that's the superposition of the parallel and perpendicular together okay so this is about the motion of a charged particle in case of uniform magnetic field uh, all the three cases are very very important and uh, from the examination point of view they are they are very popular and there is a question generally coming in in the next uh, upcoming video we will be having some example related to all these three cases here the theoretical part i have covered and uh, prior to that we have talked about that the moving charge particle uh, in a magnetic field experience a force and this is the application in case of uniform magnetic field well, so make your notes and uh, go through all the points. If there is any concern, let me know. Uh, otherwise, you are on the trap. Thank you for watching. Have a great time.